I mean, there's the old ten thousand hours idea that it takes ten thousand hours to become brilliant. It's twaddle, to be perfectly honest, but it does take a lot of time to become good at something. Um, so therefore, we want to maximise the opportunities for a for a child to to face or to bowl or to catch as many balls as possible. So we've got to find ways of being as innovative as possible to maximise the number of of contacts or number of balls, deliveries, um, hits that they get, catches that they hit. Um, <clears throat> and I think that means moving away from the traditional net where you get your 30 balls in two hours and that's it. Then, of course, the more involved you are, the more engaged you are, the more likely you are to want to come back. If you get 10 hits in a day, then why would you bother? Psychologically, in motivation terms, people are driven by a desire to show you how good they are, to demonstrate their competence, to have autonomy, to make choices and, and make decisions about what they want to do and connectedness or relatedness of, of building relationships with people, whether that's their teammates or whether that's the coaches. Um, and perhaps the most important is that sense of, of accomplishment or sense of achievement. So I always think if we if we're giving children tasks where they can't do it and they get that will lead to boredom, frustration or walking away. Exploration is is front and center in learning. Um, we have to find, well, we have to give players the opportunity to find their best solution rather than making an assumption that the best solution is the one on page 32 of the MCC coaching book. You know, that you have to play the shot like this. We, we need to give them the opportunity to, to explore. Um, I reframe that then that if you're exploring, there are going to be times you do it right, times you don't do it right. And that's not try and reframe that as not making mistakes, but actually as part of the process of learning. By by making a mistake, you work out what not to do. <laughs> it's often really just as important as working out how to do it as well. So um, exploration also means looking for information, picking up information. It might be exploring, you know, the bowlers at action to try and work out when they're going to bowl a googly or what information do they tell me. We've got to promote that sense of exploration as well. Or um, if you're batting in, can you spot the fielder that's too deep? Or can you spot the fielder with no arm or the one who's left-handed and right-handed? So you, through coaching, we can direct search to, to look for that sort of to get them to explore and find that sort of information so that they can then exploit it. You know, like really important. What handed was that was cover there? Oh, I don't know. Right. Well, if you'd have knocked it to that side of him, you could have, there's a single on it. If you hit that side, there's not. So you can create games that, that invite them to pick up, to explore and pick up information from their opponents or the pitch or the situation that they can then exploit. And players will often sit in their comfort zone and, and don't push themselves out of that. And that's where the coach or the game design can actually naturally push on that self-challenge. Like we were saying before about the six out of eight, six out of ten. Can you beat that game? Yeah, okay. Now can you challenge yourself to get more? Let's find out. Um, but really trying to put the emphasis on them taking responsibility for their own learning with you alongside them as a guide you know on, on the i know people don't like to hear oh it's a journey but but it, but it is <laughs> and you're as you're a coach who who's going alongside them on that journey um and just when you need to you you sort of guide sometimes you might need to tell obviously and sometimes you would want them to lead as well so you sort of shifting back and forward on this continuum but wherever I always think wherever possible, you're trying to get them to take the lead. Um, 
even coming back with their own game design you know like here's here's a challenge could you could you come back with a game there's a player i work with i go to work he was over with us in australia for a year and i go go to work come home got another game for you in right let's go with it <laughs> you know um loved it To become good is a very messy journey, um, and it doesn't. It very rarely is a straight line that everybody just, you know, goes straight through the the system from start to to the top. Uh, and there will be periods of going backwards in that, um, and that's going to be very dependent on the child and 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 often really linked to growth and development. Um, and I know New Zealand cricket. Have done a lot of work on biobanding and trying to work out you know where you your maturation rate impacts on your performance but i think around the teenage years this is where this becomes really challenging for, for coaches and for players um and at 14 i think there can be what is it sort of about 20 centimeters 25 centimeter difference in height between the the tallest and the the shortest and if you think about that in terms of lever lengths and power, then they're all going to solve the problem in different ways, or they're not going to be able to solve the problem if they're tiny. But what they will do is it will develop their game in a lot of different ways. But that can be a really threatening time for teenagers um, in terms of everybody else, you know, their, their mates have, have become big and strong and can whack it out of the park and the little one can't and doesn't think they're as good because of that. And the coaches don't think they're as good because of that, because they don't have the power. Well, eventually they'll probably be taller than the other ones and will have the power. Um, but in that period of time, can't score as quickly, or but they develop skills of knocking the ball around, for example. Um, I think bowling's a re you know, really important one. We, we saw in that study we did up in Auckland that, the little one or the late maturers became spinners because they just didn't have the strength to become fast bowlers when they were facing early maturers or maturers on time. But down the line, they're six foot five and can bowl wheels, but they've gone away from the game by then because we've lost them because um, we've not supported them through that development period. Um, so I think the coaches really have to be very aware of that. And, and for me, it's sort of about, yes, we want to win, but it's about development in the end. We want to try and maximise every player. And we don't know who's going to be the superstar. At, so or very rarely we know who's going to be the superstar. You can't write people off in the teenage years. You don't know who they're going to, who's going to be good. It's a lottery. Um, and often the ones who love it the most are the ones who become good anyway. So that comes back to our role as coaches is, is trying to get them to create that love that they'll just work so hard at it and or not work hard it's the wrong one play so hard that they'll they'll eventually they'll be the ones who come through